All right, welcome to Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports, presented by Hyundai. Coming up, we'll tell you if Jason Garrett going to the Giants was a smart move. And an hour from now, I'll have the most fearless take of the day. The NFL's latest social justice campaign just proved the hollowness of the woke agenda. But we start with the NBA. Sponsored by Popeye's Chicken. Say it again. Mm, sounds mm. good, Popeye's Chicken. Chris. All right, people ask me all the time, what's your problem with LeBron James? Why do you constantly criticize him? He thinks he's a victim. He thinks there's power and progress for black people in victimhood. I passionately disagree. The hunt for victimization is the most unmanly, non-masculine, anti-Christian endeavor under, ever undertaken by mankind. There's no dignity in victimhood, no rewards either. The hunt for victim status emasculates and embarrasses the hunter. I'll use the debris controversy at LeBron James Jr.'s high school basketball game yesterday afternoon as Exhibit A. A piece of debris hit the back of Bronny Jr. as he prepared to inbound the ball in the third quarter. The ref briefly stopped the game. Security attempted to find the person responsible for throwing the tiny piece of debris that touched the back of Bronny without causing a physical reaction. Eventually, it was learned that a young person threw the debris. Hours before the Lakers played the Celtics, LeBron tweeted out a video of the incident and posted a message. Haiti has no age limit. James Gang is billed, I think he meant built for it, and well-equipped as we proceed. After the games, James elaborated on the incident. I mean, it's just disrespectful. I mean, um, and it was a little kid, too. Um, I don't know how old that little kid was. Um, you know, so... I don't know. I don't know if he learned that on his own or he learned that at home, or whatever the case may be, but it's, it's disrespectful. Um, I wonder how old that kid is, uh, you know, if he was the age around Bronny's age or, or Bryce's age. And, uh, you know, I would like him to see him try that while you're paying attention. All right, well, this morning the mystery was solved. An eight-year-old boy copped to the crime of the century. Take a look. I have a Lakers bed. Lakers bag, and I, it wasn't a hate crime, um, and I know that's what you thought, because I'm not a Boston Celtics fan, and I am really sorry. All right, turns out the kid has a lot in common with LeBron James. He'll go to ridiculous lengths to garner attention. On the kid's YouTube page, he explained he threw the orange peel because Bronny wouldn't turn around when he was shouting his name. The game's Jane is a victim of the fanaticism LeBron tries to inspire virtually every day. LeBron wants his son to be a social media celebrity. Weird things happen to celebrities. They get stalkers, people write them goofy letters, and apparently they get tiny orange pills tossed at them by kids. Even weirder things happen in the make-believe world of social media. Facts, nuance, compassion, patience, all disappear. Social media is the headquarters for racial division and victimhood. Like most people craving for victimhood, LeBron acted swiftly before facts could interfere and jumped on Twitter to claim victimhood for himself and the James gang. It's not the first time he's done it. Who knows? Maybe it was an eight-year-old kid who spray-painted the garage door of LeBron's Brentwood mansion. We'll never know because LeBron's servants scrubbed the graffiti before police could see it and investigate. LeBron's servants should have covered up the orange pill crime as well before it could be investigated. My problem with LeBron? God showed him incredible favor, blessing him with physical gifts that lifted him from poverty and dysfunction, and yet he's still seeking victimhood. <clears throat> All right, joining the desk now are Fox Sports analyst LeVar Arrington and USA Today NBA writer Mark Medina. All right, Marcellus, I'll start with you. Is this orange pill debris controversy a bad look for LeBron? No, I don't think it is. Um, if you really want to dive into it, I think it's actually something we should truly respect about LeBron, who in this situation and many others hasn't prioritized his celebrity over just being a father and being a dad. Now, where does this land in terms of LeBron James taking this to his millions and millions of followers? and letting us judge this in the court of public opinion. Let's be real, that's a big court because of his celebrity and because of his greatness. It's not a felony. It's not a misdemeanor. Infraction, offense, something lower level. But it still lands somewhere in your scope 
if you're a father. And it's funny, when you're not a father, I know you're not, Jason, you talk a lot of things when you're not a father. I've been there. When you theorize about how this is going to go, like just like a football game, everybody got a plan until they get hit. And before you become a father, you think you're just going to go out there and regurgitate your values, your teachings. But then once you become one, once you give life, which is the greatest love there is, you start to learn the nuances. And you start to learn that some things that you thought were absolutely correct need to be altered. And vice versa, some things that you were just contrary to need to be re revisited. And I think in this situation, it's a good look for a guy who's like, my brand, my com commercialism, my commerce, all take second fiddle to me being a father in this moment. It's not an egregious act, but as a father, I would have responded. And my... Via social media. Massive following. That First of all, I can't glue into your channel and then get mad at your programming. If you're on Marceau's Wally's page, if you don't like it, there's a great option for you. Go away. I'm fine. <laughs> and LeBron James is probably feeling the same way, but he's not trying to be disrespectful. I think this is something that LeBron James wanted to try as a lower-level offense in his courtroom. We just took witness to it. I don't think it's an indictment on him as a father, and I'll touch on that, but I do think it's a bad look. And, and the reason why I think it's a bad look uh, is because you are now placing more of a target on not only yourself as LeBron James, but more importantly, you're placing more of a target on Bronny. And when when he made it a public deal and and did the interview on it and gave it as much attention as he did, and then did the the social media aspect of it. While I agree with your your aspects and components of fatherhood, his fatherhood is not in question. I just think that the the approach could be different. And the reason why I'd say the approach would, would be different, I am a dad, and I'm, I, I have children that play, play sports. I have a son named LeVar that plays football. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recall one instant um, in particular where the, there was a ringer on the other side of the field, and my son had cleat marks all up and down his, his, his ribs mm -hmm. after the game from the kid running over everybody. One kid went <laughs> to, to the had to be taken away in the ambulance. Mm. The point of the story was I was not going to run to social media and be like, my 12-year-old son was getting ran over by a 16-year-old man, young man on this football field during this game. My contingency was I wanted to talk to my son after the game was over, and, and I had to talk to my wife and my, my family and even the other kids' um, parents about removing our kids from this dangerous situation. I don't think that that was for an interview. I don't think that was for social media. I think that should have been something as a dad needed to be handled in in close quarters with Bronny, just like I did with my son. Not saying he has to handle it like me, but I think it should have been something. Like you did. But it's, <laughs> I think it is something that probably would have been better off being handled behind closed doors. I mean, clearly LeBron may have spoken well too early before all the facts emerged, because I think if he saw the latest video, he would have a different point of view. But I think in fairness to LeBron, he was also speaking on the initial footage and the fact that Bronny has had plenty of other experiences where he's been heckled, he's been taunted. And if you look at that video, Bronny responded really well. He turned yeah. around, kind of gave a look, but he didn't have much reaction. So yes, maybe he spoke out of turn too quickly using social media for all things, I think can be too much at times. But I think the overarching point of Defending his kid and how he reacted is totally fine. I, I, I agree with that in the sense of nothing happened here, in my view, that's all that unusual. If you go to college basketball games, you go to passionate environments, uh, it, professional environments, fans get things thrown at them, or athletes get things thrown at them. Sometimes batteries, some things that are dangerous. And, and my problem with LeBron and the pushing his son into being a social media figure is, is he, his son's a 14-year-old a freshman in high school dealing with things that college athletes and pro athletes deal with. That environment has now come to his son's game, and I think there was a way to protect his son from that. Michael Jordan's kids played college basketball. They were pretty good high school basketball players. They weren't pushed out there as celebrities. And again, I know social media makes things differently, but LeBron has really seemed to embrace 
his children moving into the social media sphere all the way down to his five-year-old daughter, to his 14-year-old son. And I just think you're placing, again, that's why I say celebrities, they get stalked, they get goofy letters, people do weird things to them. You're placing your children in that celebrity lane and weird things happen. That's the protection I guess I would be advising LeBron more to rather than going to social media and claim, oh, my God, everybody hates us, and we're built for this, and blah, blah, blah. And it's really just an 8-year-old kid that's doing something over the top, silly, and, you know, it's not, it's not remotely hate or, or anything He's of just that said disrespectful. And it, it, it's interesting, there's nothing unusual to this situation you stated. But there is still something wrong. And what happens is we get desensitized to where that standard is. And LeBron James, respect for him, still knowing what the epicenter of right and wrong is. So he's like, I'm going to highlight this. Now, how is he going to highlight this? He uses social media, which Michael Jordan couldn't use. So every time we go back into yesteryear and say what they did was better, it's like they didn't have an option. They used to be on the Mod Rashad show every Saturday, Inside Stuff. I used to watch them, here goes my son. We're playing basketball, we're warming up. That was their social media version. Different options right now. So I look at LeBron as his greatest gifts are not his size and stature. For anyone who's physically endowed, and I'll raise my hand, damn it, because I'm 6'4", 280, and ran a 4'6". That's not usual. But I wasn't LeBron James at the top of this pyramid. But I did go to school with two guys who were 6'8", 250 in high school. We won a state championship with them. They're actually famous. The Ball Twins. Not Lonzo, not LaMelo. The Ball Twins. I'm talking about LeVar's brothers. And if you look at this situation, the best asset LeBron has shown me since he was 16 on the cover of Sports Illustrated as the chosen one, is that he was able to mentally navigate without stepping in it, despite not having the support system that we think is adequate. No father, moved around everywhere, mom's not there. So LeBron, whether you want to say it's overcorrection or properly supporting his kids, is saying, I did all this without support fully and with the limelight at its brightest. So we're not going to run from the sun. It comes up every single day, son. I'm going to put you in the best schools. I'm going to give you the most support. I'm going to get you out there. Because that's how success is bred. Success begets success. I respect this I, man. I would say it. all of those things still exist had he not put it on social media. And that, to me, that's, that's the point of where I'm coming from with this. Just looking at how, you know, me and my son interact and the, the different challenges that he has. And I did not create a a superstar persona for him on social media, nor do I have the ability that LeBron would have to be able to do that. But with that being said, I can father my son in a way where he is prepared to understand what goes into going into the arena, going into the stadium as a performer on that field. You have to be prepared and, and expecting of things in hostile environments. You have to be prepared as to what the other team may say or do to you in those environments. And to me, I think some things, because of that birth given right as me being your father and you being my, my child, I think some of those things should be left to personal and private comments, uh, and private conversations, and not so much shared where it's like, listen, I didn't even hear a, a real solution in the interviews and the quotes that I saw that I read or listened to from LeBron. I would be giving my son solutions and those things would be taking place behind closed door in, in an open dialogue because I think it's more, it's much more than typing out what you thought it was and pressing send on it for everybody to consume it. Right, and when you look at the way LeBron uses social media in general, if you look at that Instagram story, there's like six, 12 posts a day. And I think on one hand, this is the world we're in and it's great if you wanna promote your brand, tout your son's accomplishments, those are all good things. And the fact that he's willing to go to his games despite his busy schedule, those are all positives. But there always seems to be a sense of too much is too much when you're documenting day-to-day -day minutia, especially when it's uh, your child, because you're putting them in the limelight unnecessarily. And on one hand, they are protecting him. Like, he doesn't do interviews. You know, everything's funneled through Sierra Canyon. But when you're constantly exposing every single day-to-day -day with him, you're going to get this kind of attention. Yeah, my, my take is, like, social media is a stage. And 
when you're on stage, you perform. And performances, generally speaking, are inauthentic. And that's why I, I'm, I guess, if I can avoid a stage, and particularly for a young person, and get them all involved in an arena where you're constantly performing and your life feels like it's under a microscope, and going to a high school basketball game, you're being heckled, and then a kid that loves you, because there's a thin line between love and hate, mm -hmm. and that kind of passion provokes people to do silly things. And so here is a 14-year-old kid that's on this team, comes off the bench, didn't score a point, but there's a fanatic in the arena that's trying to shout his name and then throws an orange pill at him to get his attention. I, I just think there's ways to avoid it. I think a lot of other uh, celebrity athletes with their children have avoided putting this kind of pressure and spotlight on their son, and that's where I think LeBron has made a mistake. Yeah, but I, I think I, I'm hearing really two things. One is the, the real disdain for social media, like what it promotes and what it can do and how it can get out of control, how it can become radioactive to your personality and how you display it. And then another thing that I'm hearing is how LeBron James in this situation is choosing to activate his social media and those powers that can take Bronny and others off track. But if there's anyone in this sports world, and I'm gonna use this term loosely because role models for me are not people who play sports because that is a single existence and there's much more to life than just how you dribble. But if we don't use Le LeBron James as a role model, damn it, I can't think of one better who's had this amount of limelight shine has still been the face of the organization, the NBA, for 20 years? Before he was even in the NBA, he was, like, becoming the face of it and has never stepped in it. So if I can't trust in LeBron and the way he's doing it, who should I trust in? Well, first of all, I would trust in yourself and your family and God first. But uh, mm. as it relates to... I don't LeBron, know about all that. As it relates to LeBron... I, 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 I would say this, step in it is all relative. Now, again, you step in it to some people means, oh, has he been arrested? Has he done something that's generated media headlines that are negative? Th that's one. Others might consider stepped in it to be, and this would be me, uh, are you... <laughs> have you lost your self-awareness and have you become a unwitting tool of a social media app, Nike, whomever, to promote things that you think are in the best interest of you and your alleged people, uh, where others might say, well, no, that's actually not in our best interest. Uh, and again, so I, I think LeBron, like, as a political pundit, has, like, stepped in it way out over his skis. Knows virtually you really nothing believe that? Oh, absolutely. Can I say this? Go evaluate his comment. Can I say this? You know what? I, I think in our court of public opinion, which is this show, the three things that people try to bring up to trial, and I'm going to be the greatest defense attorney for LeBron, is a $5 million to a Boys and girl, Girls Club decision, his daughter having a YouTube channel, him running on the court without shoes on, and now we're going to react to an orange peel. Like... That is the standard for stepping in it? Boy, we need to pick but our I think, but, but, Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. That's think, stepping in it? But I think to the point, Again, there, 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 are, there are different, <laughs> right, there are different <laughs> definitions, and I think, like, I've been... Well, let me step in that I've been, instead I, of the stuff, some of the stuff that I've stepped I've in. I've been addressing the field of competition, so I didn't address oh. the, the young boy at, at the grown-ups game throwing the orange pill. I was addressing more so from that standpoint. But addressing what you're saying, I still think that that is more grounds to protect your kids and their and <laughs> their identities. Like, in, instead of, all right, they have a YouTube channel and they want to come up with a YouTube channel, great. If Bronny wants to do social media and talk about social media and do certain things, okay, but let's have the, the rules of engagement. How, how are you using it? In what ways are you using it? Because there can be too much exposure. Bronny, uh, all due respect, he, he has played well on, on the AAU circuit, has created a name for himself. 
But he, but he by no means. Well, he's a it, freshman. He on by no means. Yeah, team. but the elites, <laughs> the, the elites, Mikey it's Williams. All of the attention uh, that he's getting. It's a guy didn't compared to his daddy. His daddy's laughing at this attention. Like this, all you get. No, like, no are you kidding? No, and look how it I, resulted I, in his father. Have, I think that's the greatest leader the for this. I think you have, LeBron, you have to, you have to manage it because. You do not want your son. He does this manage is, this it. Is Ask Sierra Canyon if he you, manages it. He you does. Do, you do not want your son to be LeBron James when he's not LeBron James. He's Bronny James. Right. You cannot make him LeBron James no matter what you do. It's what his actions are going to dictate that will, will show who he is. And right now, all of this attention that's coming his way can create a false level, a false sense of accomplishment, a false sense of, of identity. Because until he proves out what he's going to be, what he's going to do, if it's his father defining that by what's going on to social media, the interviews that he's doing, then to me, you're already giving him a very, very difficult opportunity to live up to what his possible expectations LeVar, would be. His dad is his doing life. it. His dad is doing it. We're That's defining true. it. LeBron is not defining it. He's, he's just putting doing it out there to be and, defined. And LeBron is just sitting there saying, trust me, I can navigate through these waters because guess what? He hasn't stepped in it. Now, there's uh, a long road ahead for Bronny in terms of how he develops as a player, as a person. But so far from what I hear and see, he's handling everything really well. I mean, that video incident, he could have gone the other way where he confronts the fan. Maybe it becomes even bigger than what it is now. Yeah. And then number two, the things that I've been hearing with out of Sierra Canyon, as far as how he's handling all this attention, he's been pretty kind of unfazed by it. And mm. going back to what LeBron said yesterday, he was praising Bronny for the fact that he's sometimes a lot calmer than he is. Yeah. So I think from that aspect, there are a lot of positive signs that suggest that he'll handle this just that fine. That can happen behind closed doors. All right, stick yeah. around. At the end of the show, find out our approval rating for LeBron James <laughs> and Uncle okay. Jimmy's take on the Lakers star. And coming up at the top of the hour, I have the most fearless take of the day. Forget the woke narrative. No sport or industry has done more for black men than the NFL. Hey. But first, Jason Garrett has a new job. We'll tell you if joining up with the New York Giants was a smart move. Next! Speak for Yourself is presented by Hyundai.